In this video, I'm going to show you how I added a uh, vertical geothermal earth tube to my recently constructed greenhouse, which you can see pictured here. If you want to get more information about the greenhouse itself, look in the description and uh, there's a link to how I built it and, and why. So the uh, vertical geothermal earth tube is essentially consists of drilling wells into the ground, pumping air from the greenhouse into those wells where, depending on what you're trying to do with it, they're either cooled or warmed uh, by the temperature in the, in, the, in the hole, which stays at a fairly constant temperature year-round. Uh, this is a plot from the state of Indiana in the United States. It shows the t underground temperature at a variety of depths, ranging from uh, 6 inches all the way down to 12 feet. You'll notice that at 12 feet, the temperature only varies between uh, about 47 and 57 degrees Fahrenheit. This is a parts list for uh, this project. It's not exhaustive, and um, I really, uh, I'm not going to go over each of these. I recommend you just basically hit stop and uh, review what I've done here. Here's a cartoon view of the greenhouse and the five geothermal wells that I've drilled down to 10 feet depth which is where I struck bedrock, unfortunately. I would have liked to drill to about 20 feet. The main tool for the project is the Seymour post hole auger. So I'm gonna show you how to use this uh, uh, post hole auger. What we're gonna to do today, so I've already screwed the, the auger uh, head is screwed onto the main pipe body. I'm gonna first take it off. So to do that, I use uh, a pair of vice grips around the smooth part of the pipe, then a pipe wrench around here. I've already kind of pre-loosened it. You can get kind of tight. Just going to loosen that puppy up. This is without a doubt the hardest part of the of the process. All right, so there it goes. It's off. Definitely recommend putting grease on the uh, threads of the pipe before you put it on. So now we have another length of pipe here. See how it's it? It's fairly clean. Don't need to grease it. So it's a, it's a four foot length of black pipe three-quarter inch with a uh, coupling on the end here so I can start by screwing it on and really you don't need to when you're tightening it up you don't need to tighten it up all that tight because um, as the natural twisting motion of the auger it'll tighten on its own so there it goes I'm gonna screw the other end on really easy tight enough. Take the vice grips off. We'll go over to my holes here and you can see how the unit's now essentially eight feet long. I'm pretty tall so this thing's about eight feet long and uh, you see here I've got uh, five holes drilled. Right now they're at four feet and I really recommend uh, drilling these things in parallel. So in other words the hardest part of this is actually uh, is actually uh, changing the the pipes. So here I am. If you can back up a little bit, camera person, show me drilling. I'm just twisting like this. Pretty easy actually. Got the weight of the uh, drill string to help push it down. There we go. Hold up a load. There's some dirt. Stick it down. You just keep. So the purpose of the geothermal system is to basically pull. Uh, if I'm running it in winter mode or I'm trying to warm up the greenhouse, pull cold air from the greenhouse by from duct fans, send the air, cold air from the greenhouse down into the geothermal holes within the small duct pipe. And then as the cold air exits, bot, exits the, uh, the uh, duct line out of the bottom of the hole, it's going to be warmed up by the uh, uh, relatively warm air in the bottom of the uh, bottom of the hole, which is probably uh, 60 degrees Fahrenheit. So if we have a properly sealed 
uh, return air system, that air will flow back, the, air, the warm air will flow back into the greenhouse. And the, the same concept works uh, during the summertime when it's too hot inside the greenhouse. I'm sure we could, we could vent the greenhouse, we probably should vent the greenhouse, but uh, this, this will be a good way to kind of keep things under control as well as a, as a natural air conditioner. So next I build up a wood frame using scrap lumber, like so. The idea here is to have ample space to handle both the uh, um, ductwork that I'm going to use to blow air from the greenhouse, it's either too hot or too cold, down into the holes to moderate the temperature, and then have enough space uh, to return back to the greenhouse. So the, this wood frame that I've built um, allows me to, it gives me ample space to kind of hold the pipes and support them, keep them from getting stepped on, and uh, then I can, I can staple plastic on the top of it to, to make it airtight. So in the next clips I'll show you how I can use the um, uh, four inch flexible drainage pipe to construct the air circulation system. So I need to attach uh, various uh, sections of this drainage pipe to essentially form the um, air distribution system for the geothermal and uh, you can you can buy them with sort of male and f they, they come with male and female couplings but um, it's unlikely that you're gonna have the luxury of having the perfect length available so I just bought a 25 foot section of the uh, pipe and I'm cutting it to uh, purpose to per for size <coughs> so essentially to do that to fit it okay, I just basically take the uh, take these guys here and just uh, make some cuts in them. Really, just two ought to work. And uh, what you can do is essentially, even though this is not a male to female fitting, you can basically slide this bad boy in here, and I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. So here are the two sections of pipe after I've basically made the cut. Here's one cut. Turn it over. There's the other cut and uh, push one pipe through the, the uh, feeder pipe into the end of the T. You can see I've actually put uh, just dry roll screws to hold the two pieces together and then I'm going to duct tape them so that they look like this. Not pretty but you know it's uh, it's airtight and uh, should be pretty solid. So now we're looking at uh, the three units of the air circulation system, kind of in cartoon view. And each one of them, notice, has a, uh, a duct fan at the head of it. And we basically connect the duct fan to the four-inch flexible drainage pipe, run that drainage pipe out into the, toward the yard, and then drop down into the hole, in my case about eight feet deep. So about halfway down the... Uh, down the hole, I actually, instead of using the drainage pipe, I, I have uh, taped together, using foil tape, some um, tin cans. And I basically, um, for one, I'm cheap, but secondly, I want to improve the, the um, con conductance of the heat from the um, geothermal hole to, to basically the heat or cool the air more efficiently. So once we get it constructed, we can drop them in there. So notice I've got the duct fans kind of ganged up here uh, at the near the near the uh, screened-in patio, so I have e easy access to the elect electricity. I could run these in and off the grid mode if I had a solar panel, and these only draw 12 watts a piece. These fans, so uh, it would be easy to run those from a battery. But right now I'm running them off of a typical 110 volt uh, system. So the next clips, we'll take a look at uh, how I actually have, have what these things look like in, in practice and how I drop them down into the hole. Here you can see the uh, one of the one of the finished uh, feeder pipes. So this uh, this feeder pipe is going to be connected to a blower up inside the greenhouse, and it's going to feed uh, two geothermal holes. So I've got um, you know, it's about six feet in length. I've got one T feeding the first hole, and I've got one L joint feeding the uh, bottom hole. So I'll just show how I I'm slide this thing in. Excuse my reach. It sits in the hole. 
here we have all the feeder lines in place and uh, got five holes two of the feeders serve two holes one of the feeders serves one hole and uh, you can see how I've got the cords and the intake fans up here in the uh, in the green The next step is to cover the channels with uh, plastic. I actually use greenhouse plastic because I've got uh, you know, scrap lumber kind of lining the, the sides of this uh, uh, air channel. I can just use a staple gun, staple it down. As you'll see in the next clip, I basically also, um, once I'm done with this, I can cover the, the plastic sheeting with uh, uh, styrofoam insulation to kind of really really make it insulated as it does get very cold here in Colorado. And now we have the uh, system that's basically finished. Um, I've built up a uh, berm of dirt on the side, covered it with rocks just to give you a sense of how tall it was. If you remember the um, wood flume that was built up around the side, about eight inches. Should be good insulation. Here's a view of the greenhouse, about uh, four weeks since I planted and got some nice crops in there. Um, this shows the geothermal system, but, um, got three duct fans in there and you can kind of look under there and see how the return air comes in. So it's, it's not a beautiful system but we've got uh, plenty, of, plenty of volume of return air given what we're sending down the hole. 